Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, thank you very much for coming and watching me. Uh, this one's been filmed a few months ago. I mean, this was a little back in July. I'm in mid-September now. It's starting to get a little cold out, but uh, I'm trying to catch up, get all the videos out. Editing takes the longest part. So in this video, I'm going over how I fixed the uh, frame rail, and then I had me doing suspension. Now, I had to do a lot of editing. I mean, I had a couple hours worth of video, and I had to cram down as much as possible, so... I uh, hope you guys like it. Uh, I did get something a while ago for my other car. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen a picture of it. So I'm decided I'm going to go ahead. Go with T3, Techno Toy Tuning's front and rear brake kit. And while I'm at it, I might as well do suspension. Yeah, I know. It's going to be nice. Uh, when I put the rims on it... Um, the car sat way too high with those. I knew it was going to when I put those rims on it. Uh, the tires are a little bit smaller than I wanted to go with. So now I will be able to get adjustability with it. So uh, since I have to take the front uh, passenger side strut off anyways, I might as well uh, replace them because I have to fix that uh, rust hole. Now these are Techno Toy Tunings. Actually, they made these. It's not... Ones I sent out, these are actually based off the 280ZX front struts on it. So I got them. I got the uh, micro uh, big brake kit for the front and rear for them. So I'm going to go ahead and start tearing uh, the front apart and go ahead and do this. I did get new ball bearings on it too. I might, well, might as well put those, see how bad those ones look once I get the front struts off. Uh, because there's a car show coming up July 21st. I mean, the car's running, but I got to get to uh, be able to drive it and stop it. <laughs> so I got a lot of work to do in a short amount of time, like less than two weeks. So uh, wish me luck and uh, stay tuned. All right, I'll give you guys a view of what it looks like beforehand. So <clears throat> I'll have to see how bad this is when I grind it. I'm not going to show anything of me taking this apart or anything. It's pretty basic, you got the bolts up here on top, and then just try to, a lot of build up and stuff to clean off to get to the bolts and bolt everything to drop the whole strut out. So, good view before. All right, bring you guys back up. This took a while to do. I was trying to cut at least my metal back as possible. There is was two layers here. Um, I don't know if you can really see it, but there's a, a, a panel for the uh, front bumper that goes from back here and goes all the way down and it narrows down to here. So that's why you can see a little thicker here. So um, I cut back until I found no more rust. Uh, I just have surface rust on it. So I grinded that away. So I'm gonna have to make two panels here. One to go from here and just cover back down then the one for the skin, because that's inside the engine bay. <laughs> Actually there, so I say I didn't want to cut up that high. But and then, I'll to, then I'll cover another one there. I probably didn't have to remove the lip here. It just makes it easier to spot well than to have it continually swelled all the way down it. I'm gonna go in through and brush some of it. I mean, there's some good pitting through there. I am going to spray though, like uh, with the other car, um, a frame, uh, in, internal frame coating to help seal it all up. I'll, I'm gonna brush it off and best I can and protect it. I mean, personally, I've come to the conclusion like this was really bad, this is still pitted. It's gonna be like that all the way down the frame rail. It's gonna have pitted, rust on it. You can't, there's nothing you can do about that. I mean, so eventually when I, if I do take the engine out and like paint the engine bay or something, I can go through and put some, just uh, seal some stuff down there to help protect it, make it last longer. But this is a garage, gonna be a garage kept car, so. All right, so let me go ahead and start uh, making some uh, patch panels for this. All right, here's the panels I got made up for it. This is the 18 gauge one. That's gonna go on the inside. I didn't take it all the way down because I was having issues trying to line it up. The last car was easier because I removed everything. So it was a lot easier to line everything up. So, but I got holes here. So I'm gonna plug weld the top, weld down the side and use my pinch welder. I'm gonna do the bottom that way, get a good seal on it. And then this one's the outer skin. I made this out of 20 gauge. So, went ahead there, got uh, for plug welds, and then I'm going to have to weld all the way across the top for it. And I'm going to also then just pinch weld. Should have enough juice to do that. So, yeah, put 
coat the back with it. And then I did spray rust encapsulator in the inside. Try to clear, clean up the best I can. Do got a lot of surface rust. So I'm gonna let that dry for a minute and then I'm gonna get to welding. So all welded up, I went ahead and I did put a primer onto it. And then just to make sure I got all the pinholes when I went back and ground everything flush, I did, this is a uh, sealer onto it. Usually you put this in the inside of the car, but I um, just want to make sure this is good and protected. I am going to go after once this dries with a, uh, uh, see, I think Rust-Oleum underbody to cover it and just help protect it. So now it's a little bumpy. See how well this works. I've seen people do this with, uh, it's starting to get dark outside, but uh, pre-paint, uh, prep cleaner. So we're just going to spray it real quick. Just help take my finger and just smooth it out. Help to th thin out too and get in the cracks that I need it to. I mean, we'll mess with the primer a little bit, but yeah, there we go. Help flatten it and smooth it out. That looks good. All right, so I think that's it for that part. So I'm happy. That's the only rust repair that I was planning on doing with welding. Oh. So now I have to work on the suspension. So I didn't uh, I'll tell you how to remove the struts. The struts were actually very easy uh, to remove. I mean, you got the three bolts on top up here. You unbolt those. And then on your uh, knuckle, you had the two bolts underneath it. You just unbolt those. And then the brake line, that's right there. I just cut it. I'm not reusing them or anything. I'm getting new brake lines for it. So uh, now, since that off, I do need to eventually go. But since I do have that car show event coming up, I'm not going to have time to replace all this stuff and get the car as good as I wanted to. So I'm going to get the strut put in, the brakes and all that hooked in. And eventually, soon, I'm going to have to go back and I have to replace the ball joints, tie rod ends and the bushings just for the sway bar. Um, so I will go back and do all of that. But for a little bit of drive to enjoy it, I think I can get away with it because I do have other uh, lower control arms I have. So I'm just gonna get those prepped, cleaned up, painted, put new bushings and everything in them. And I can just swap them out real, well, it won't be real quick, but it'd be faster than just trying to put that. So I have all new stuff because I originally got all that stuff for the other car. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on this, so. Okay. The difference between the stock 510 and the 280ZX uh, struts, the ones that are made by Technotoy Tuning, this is ones they machined and make themselves. They're not old ones that were made for coilovers. So, standing up wise, you can tell it's about three inches shorter. So, it's a nice really setup. Um, the springs I got were 225, I think, or 250. Uh, I got them a while ago off the find the paperwork for it because originally we were supposed to go into the other car that was going to be getting a ka this one doesn't have that so uh when you order it it comes just like this the only thing you don't have is the hub uh, i do have some original ones i could take the hub off if i wanted to and use it but instead of that i kind of went and i got the ones that they machine and they make so these are really nice everything's nice and clean you do got to put the uh, ball bearings, the bearings inside of it to the inner and the, uh, the back side to it. So we'll go over that, how to do that. So this is actually put in, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, um, the difference is that this is shorter. The geometry is off a little bit. Uh, one other thing I forgot to show you. I picked these up a long time ago from uh, eBay. A little spacer it helps realign the geometry of it because when you try to bolt this in this is going to be sitting a lot lower and it's going to have more of an angle pitch and it'll pitch the wheels more so all this does is goes up underneath bolts in two bit bolts there and then it hooks up to your knuckle so it actually raises this up it still lowers it but it'll actually uh, align the suspension a lot better so um i mean 
they do make newer ones now. This is the old version. The other ones you can actually adjust. I think it has like a few other bolt holes wise to it. But I got these off eBay really cheap. So uh, <laughs> gotta save money where you can. So sure it doesn't match one day. Who knows? Maybe I'll re-anodize it black or gray. So uh, I just wanted to demonstrate that to it. Uh, yes, so right here is I do have the whole uh, strut. Um, you do gotta take, make sure you take the bolts off of this before you put it on top. Nice thing is they do get these little clip things that help hold the bolts in place. And this does allow for good adjusting. Um, you might have to take them out though, because it is kind of a pain in the butt to do this by yourself to get it to fit. Because um, we gotta get it lined up with this spacer. So you do have to move the lower control arm, the steering a little bit to get it lined up because it's not a great fit once you get it in there. You might actually might have to loosen the hat though too, get Allen keys and loosen that so it slides around. Um, I'm gonna try to do it without it first, then I'll go back if I need to. I will loosen that up. too bad actually so uh, I just had to angle a little bit more I didn't have to go through and tap and clean it out uh, once I got this bolt in this one actually went in a lot easier um, then up here these are 13 millimeter you have to use you might have to get a ratchet or something on the bottom because not these will keep spinning there's a torque spec on these two it's like 13 pounds or it's some it's, it's not heavy I and mean, that's just there really to support it um, so I just gave those a good hand tight end and I did uh, then down here, I'm gonna go look at the torque specs now for it. Uh, so then, pretty much that next thing I need to do is get the uh, the hub assembled. So we'll go ahead and um, start working on that. So when you buy the big brake kit, you do get the rotor that comes with the micro brake. Does come with the rotor. I went ahead and decided to go with slotted. I, I really didn't want the hole drilled. I mean, this isn't gonna be a race car. And I um, I could have just gone probably with Blaine, but that's a little fancier with the rims I have on. You're not going to be able to see it too well. But once you buy the, uh, you get the hub, if you buy that, it does come with the inner and outer bearing and uh, the O-ring and uh, the washer with it and then the seal for the back of it. So what you're going to have to start first, though, is taking the rotor. And even if you have the old uh, 280 uh, ZX or even the uh, original one, they go on the same way. They have holes that are drilled out that are fit that this lines up very uh very good uh it's a lot different than i believe their old version you had to put a hat on first then you had to put the rotor on and then bolt it down so then it give you all the hardware you need for it washer with lock uh washer into it there's four for this that have to bolt into it i'm just going to use a little bit of blue lock too some people do it some people don't that's uh, up to you i don't use much and this does use a allen key for it um to help lock in place so you do Usually there is a torque spec, I think 13 foot pounds it is. I'm just giving a good, nice snug to it. It shouldn't, um, that should be perfectly fine. I, I used to build brake kits for Volkswagens and some other vehicles too, uh, for assembly purposes. So um, this is my wheelhouse. This is what I actually know really well to do. So we'll go ahead, just take a little bit of blue lock into it. Don't want much. Get in there. And you kind of know too when you're good and snug because lock washer will go flat with it. Line up what you need to. And I guess I could do this on time lapse, but maybe I'll just speed it up. Now the next part is the fun, messy part. Make sure you have towels, rags, cause you're gonna get very messy when you're doing this. So 
can't get your O-rings out. So this is your rear one. What was that? right here for it so you gotta pack grease into it make sure because this can be a failure part if you don't put enough grease into it they they do make uh presses that you can to help press it in properly and get a good fitment they already install the inner the rings that the the uh these rest onto so that makes it kind of nice um they do make kits that you can use that you have to press and put new bearings in yourself um biggest thing there's no such thing as really i never heard of too much grease for these things they do make little machine, little things you can put these in grease and like press it, and it'll make the grease go everywhere. Uh, you can do that if you got it. Uh, I don't do enough wheel bearings to justify actually buying it. So just make sure your hands are clean. Could probably put brand new gloves on because you don't want to need dirt. So I'm gonna just hold on. I'm gonna go put some uh, new gloves. So I'm probably gonna put in fast forward for sure because I'm gonna have to add some of this up. So um, I'm gonna demonstrate. Put a big glob of grease. And you just like. Roll it into it so it jams all the grease down to the crevices so you get a good nice fit into it. So, time lapse. Okay, that was for it. Uh, I did forget to tell you guys, actually, I did spray brake cleaner on the inside, wiped it all down to make sure there's no debris or anything inside. And you do want to make sure the inside ring bearings, that they were lined up before you put the bearing into it to make sure they were pressed. I mean, I'm, they're not that hard to do, but I just wanted, you want to make sure that they didn't mess up or damage them. And then like you may have seen, I thought I'd had enough grease, I didn't, so I just use my hand because I'm going, tired of going, going through so many gloves. So that's pretty much it for that. That is now ready to go onto the spindle. Make sure you keep your uh, the nut with it. I mean, the uh, this washer that has the key mark into it to make sure everything lines up properly. So let's go ahead and throw this on. Okay, there's actually a start now. All right, so there's a few other things. They already give you the cotter pin, the nut, and the uh, locking washer, this is called. I forget what it's called, something like that. So we do need to go ahead and remove that, but also, since we're at this stage, to make it a little bit easier to bolt on, this is the bracket for the brake kit. Um, it's kind of nice. They actually give you the foot pounds for what you need to torque it down to. So, like right here, this is 30 foot pounds for the caliper to it, and then to the uh, bracket to the spindle hub. Or the spindle it says 65 pound foot pounds. So I will follow that. I do got a torque wrench. Uh, to make sure that we do that properly. So I'm going to actually put this on first. It'll just make it easier then to put the bracket on when I'm done. And you know which way it goes because they do give you a nice fancy bolts that are labeled bracket to spindle. So I mean they're they're all these are all Allen key so you don't have to fix them up. Now, you could put Loctite on these, you don't need to, because they do give you a locking wash nut for it. Um, so that makes it quite simple. So I'm just gonna pop these. All right, also I forgot to mention, there is an O-ring they give you, but with this I've already bought it. It already came with a O-ring inside. That just helps hold the cap in place. So, just go ahead and then slide this on. Try not to hit the O-rings right down the middle, knock anything out. Now the torque specs on this are really kind of funny. Uh, I might have to actually look it back up. Was it 
50 degree, oh, 18, yeah, 18 to 22 pounds. Once you tighten it down, it's usually too snug, and then you're supposed to back it off by 65 to 70 uh, ang angle wise. I, I don't know why it's kind of weird because you tighten it down too hard. You want to make sure that this bill is spin. You want to make sure that there's no wiggle play, but I think we're going to be fine. So let's adjust this. We'll go to 20 pounds because it says 18 to 22 and you're going to have to back it up anyways. So that's 20. See like right there, I'm already, it's way too stiff. Doesn't spin good, but you gotta kinda take your best call because at 20, that's too tight. That's just gonna wear those bearings out. So it says back angle wise between 65 and 70. So let's see, so 90's here. Take it, 45, there. That's good, yep, good smooth. I don't feel no play. All right, that should do it. Okay, now we got the calibers here. There's a few things you gotta do before you put put it on the bracket. You get the kit. I'm give you some nice stickers and everything. Instructions, which way to bleed. Now uh, this is the micro kit, so they are smaller. They are four piston. They do make a bigger one to it, but then you'd have to go with like six, uh, 15, 16 inch rims. And I don't want that. I'm going with 14. So I, these are the easiest ones to do brake uh, switches on. They do have these spacers in the middle that can be adjusted. Uh, since it's already kit, it's already pre-adjusted for the size that you need. So you won't have to, to remove these or add any little uh, inserts or little extra brackets to expand the bracket. Uh, the caliper so that's kind of uh that's nice so there's the cotter pin this cotter pin is what holds the brake pads in we'll go over that when we do the installation part what we do got to do is figure out okay which side this going in in mounting because they're they go either way they got bleeder screws on both now whichever bleeder screw you use you never use the ones on the bottom you always use the bleeder screws on top because you always want to get the air and the uh the air out of the unit. If you do down here, you're always gonna keep air in the system. So it is gonna be mounted like this. So I know these are the top. So we gotta come back here. We gotta add the brake line to it. They do give you the brake line and the adapter for it. Now these are not metric. Since these are made in the United States, they left these are standard. These are 7 16th ends that you have to be able to screw with. So we're gonna take this up. Now you do need to add uh, plumber tape or sealing tape, whatever you want to call it. It's got, I don't know, call it different names to it. To make sure it's a good fit and there's no leakage now. I've gotten this a little dirty, so I need to throw all of this extra stuff off. And you make sure you gotta put the right size in because these threads are not the same. You could mess it up. So since we know that this is the dome part, well, you know, I don't know, make sure I'm keeping this image. That's the part that is gonna go inside here. That's going to mess with, uh, it's hard to do this with the camera, so it locks in. So you don't have, on this side, you don't have to use any of the sealant tape, only on this side, because this is where the fluid just drops into. So just make sure you put it on the right way. You screw in right, so you make sure you wrap it the right. And it should only have to go around two times. You don't need, don't need much. Keep it nice and tight. One and two. Now, I've always had bad, bad luck with these. Always had, always thread them. These are very, these threads are very easy to mess up. And you want to make sure when you screw this in, since we know it's going like this on the car, you need this side pointing up to let the air pushes in through it and pushes out. So if you point down through there, you're gonna get an air bubble at the bottom of your line. So we don't want that. So just remember that's on that side. Try to keep it in focus the camera and try to do it by hand first. 
A lot of times people say it's hand tighten as tight as you can. Then one and a half turn around forward. So let's make sure. So that's the right way. You can over torque these and strip them out, and we don't want to make sure we don't do that. Come on. There we go. Because the brake pads can go like that, that should leave it up. And that's plenty tight. I'm not going to get any more. Okay. And then we'll just connect the hose to it now and make it easier. Okay, boom. All right, I think it's ready to go throw on the car. Just take that and take your power can and let's go. And we need the caliper bolts. Now these are gonna come with just that and the lock washer. Now these are floating calipers. Uh, there are one, it all depends on type of calipers you use. Some have type of pin that lock in, screw into it. These will actually screw in from this side and they hover inside and it will just float in the inside there. If that makes, so people get confused like, oh no, there's no threads. I must, am I missing the nut? No, you're not missing nothing. Because uh, pretty much the rotor goes bye bye, you're losing brakes anyways, so there's no point. Now, some people do lock thread these. And I probably put a little bit onto it just to make sure, just to make sure I can get the thread started, just in case you have to go back through and clean it out. And then this, you do have to torque down to 30 pounds. All right, well, let's go over these brake pads. These are spring-loaded brake pads. Very easy to put, put in a pop in there. Um, pop in there. And then, if I didn't lose everything. Sorry, Bryson, I'll tell head. You take the pin, goes through both of them, and locks it in place. Very simple. Boom. And that, that's all it takes. Now... Okay, 
So I went through, I plasma cutted the back shield off to get this off because you have to mount the uh, bracket right here for the rear brake. Now I'm running out of time today, so I'm having a bike come over and help me. So I don't think I'm gonna be filming it. So I'll go back and go through everything I'm doing because I gotta get the suspension all taken care of. So I moved the shock already. I gotta get this spring out. I don't know if I can just cut it out. I was hoping it would because I'm not using them, but I don't know how much tension still on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and you have to disconnect this to make the arm drop down lower to get the spring out. So I'm gonna do that on both sides and we'll probably have to catch you guys up afterwards because I do gotta do that, drop it, get the suspension all set up, then get the brakes in because I'm trying to get bleed and uh, get all that taken care of and all my tripod thing with me right now. So. I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. All right, here it is all together. Uh, I did drive it that day, and it's been a couple days now. I Actually, probably a couple of weeks. Uh, I've been driving it. Um, so pretty much this is the basic setup for it. Now, I did run into some issues. I'm going to try and hold the light. It's getting dark in the garage. It's getting laid out. I was, had to work a few things, but ran into a few issues with this. Uh, these calipers, the ones I got, I got these because these one, uh, I know you're uh, supposed to these are special ones. If you order the rear brake kit with the uh, parking brake, you get the ones that have these tabs in here that have it for the parking. Uh, so I don't have the parking brake yet, and uh, I just gonna worry about it later down the road. But what I ran into is these rims. Do not fit over the uh, parking brake. That's why this one I actually had to cut off. I just, there's little Allens that hold them in place. They were stripping. I don't know if they're, they have to be locked tight in or something because they were not coming out. And I was in a rush, so I just cut those off and threw it on. And I call and talk to them, and they're like, oh, yeah, it doesn't work on like OEM stock 14 inch rims. It's got to be aftermarket 14 inch rims. So I'm like, oh, well, Okay, so I canceled that, so now I'm not going to have a parking brake because I'm not buying new rims right now, and I always like the vintage rims. I don't know which ones will work or not now with Techno Toy Tuning with their bracket and stuff. So that's out. So um, they, everything else was straightforward. They'll bolt up really easily. Uh, other issue I ran into, I've been driving it around for a while, and how they have this set up back here oh, for the – there's really – this is the brake line from here. And I just connect down here. There's really, I don't know if I'm running it. I couldn't find any else how to run it. It gets in the way. If you leave it originally where it was with the uh, axle spinning. Because right here, if you can see it, this is what I had. It's hard to see in this light here. Oh, there it is. It, the axle's actually driving around and rubbed it and put a big hole in it. So I lost rear brakes. I mean, luckily the master cylinder had had two different sections for the front and rear. I'm like, man, why is it getting squishy all of a sudden? So that's why. So luckily I had a backup brake line. It's a little older from other ones. So I just did that and I bent it further out of the way. It didn't happen on that side because I actually had to replace that brake line for that side. But you know that, that was the only issue. Uh, everything else worked out pretty good. So yeah, so uh, I'm trying to remember where I left off at, but it all looks good. So now I got to re-bleed the whole brakes. That was fun. Oh, another thing is, I don't know if I didn't have the screw down for this. It, it came out and it went bye-bye. So now I have to get a new screw to hold that in. I mean, once it's on the weight on it, there's enough pressure that it doesn't spin anyway, so it's not a huge deal. But it's like, I like to have that, so. Okay, uh, I think that's it for this video. I think I covered everything. Um, plan on next video. Um, I've been working on the interior, so that'd be interesting. And then I'll do a drive with everything. You guys see it. I think I'm done with it, but I got it done. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you guys do like what you see, please give me a like and subscribe. You know, if you have any questions or comments, hey, that you know you did that wrong. Please let me know. So all right, guys. Peace.